Okay, that's pretty cool. Alright, thanks for stopping by everyone. This is BrawlDev, and Roblox has recently added a new feature that allows us to capture screenshots and have the ability to share these videos and save them to our gallery. But that's not all. We can also do a bunch of cool stuff in-game with the use of this feature. And I was informed about this from a dev forum post that came out just a few days ago, so let's go and see that really quick. So we're in this developer forum post, and this was uploaded on Valentine's Day, and it's just simply called Capture APIs Are Now Available. So I want you to take a look at this video that they've embedded onto this developer forum post. And basically what's happening here is there's this button here that says Headshot, and we're also on a mobile device. If we press Headshot, then it's going to take a screenshot of the current screen, and then the developer is going to prompt the user if they want to share the screenshot that was just taken. So if they decide to do this, then it's going to allow the user to basically send that screenshot to uh, one of their friends, and then they can even embed an inv invite link to it as well to say like, hey, uh, I'm in this game right now, you should join me, it's a lot of fun right now. And that is essentially one way of incorporating this new captures API that's now available to the public. Like obviously you can do other things with this. It gives the developer the power to take screenshots within certain sections of the game and then let the player decide what they want to do with that screenshot. If they want to share the screenshot, if they want to save it to their gallery, then they can do that. But the developer can also take a screenshot and use it to make cool things in the game, like the Polaroid camera, for instance. So I think this is a really neat feature to have in Roblox Studio. So I'm going to show you more of what this looks like in Roblox Studio as I was basically experimenting with this new API in the game. So let's go back into Roblox Studio. Captures is a universal feature that not only gives the developer power to make screenshots in the game, but also as players, we can also take screenshots ourselves using the new captures section in our settings. So you can test this out right now. If we go to our in-game settings, there's this new tab called captures. And this basically gives us an entire gallery of all the captures that we created within the Roblox games that we play. So in order to take screenshots, we need to turn this on, which allows us to capture, view, and share your favorite Roblox moments. And then you might notice that there's this button on the right side that shows that we can capture a screenshot right now. So if I click on it, then it's going to take a screenshot of the current screen, and then it's going to prompt here saying, um, the capture has been saved, you can share it with your friends. So if we go back to our in-game settings, go to captures, then we can see that our new screenshot has just been taken. It's kind of blurry for some reason, I don't know why, but uh, we're able to save it to our device, we're able to share it, and we're also able to just delete it as well. So I'm just gonna delete that because I don't really need the screenshot, and it's just going to be saved and it's just going to be saved in our gallery here. So that seems pretty neat and all, but what's the difference between this and taking screenshots and videos like we have been for like over a decade? The difference here is that it's only up to the user to be able to take a screenshot or record a video, and then it'll just be locally saved onto their device, whether they're on a phone or a computer. But in this case with captures, you're able to do a lot more with it because as the developer, like I said, uh, you can take a screenshot and do what you want with it within the game specifically, uh, or you can prompt the player to be able to share it or save it to their gallery so that it's being displayed on this gallery, which looks pretty nice. Okay, but now that I've addressed that, I'm gonna show you a couple of things that I've done with this API that I think you might find pretty interesting. The first thing I wanna show is this Polaroid camera that I created. And this was actually inspired by uh, one of the replies that I saw to the dev forum post uh, by a user named OK False that basically created a Polaroid camera and he was able to capture a screenshot and then create like a physical Polaroid um, tool so that we can see the screenshot that was just created. So if I go into like this uh, screenshot mode that I have here and then I pose for this uh, camera right here and then I click the left mouse button, then it should take a screenshot, give me a Polaroid pic, and then it should display the screenshot that was just created on my screen. So I think this is a really cool feature that gives a lot of possibilities to the developer of what they want to do with these screenshots. And I just think this is a really cool feature because not only are you able to save your screenshots to your captures, but the developer can also do really cool things with uh, the screenshots that are taken automatically. 
Now, here's one thing you might ask. With these screenshots, are they actually being uploaded to Roblox and being moderated? Yes and no. You might have seen down here in the output, it said screenshot capture ready, and then it gives me the content ID of this screenshot. And you might notice that it's not an address of RBX asset ID and then whatever number it is down there. It's actually called RBX temp 25 and 25 is meaning like this is the 25th screenshot that I took in the game. So you don't have to worry about that number there. But what matters is knowing that these screenshots are not being uploaded to the Roblox website, but instead it's being given a temporary asset ID within the game. And we can decide if we want to save the screenshot or not, because if we don't decide to save the screenshot, then it's just going to go away from our um, captures library after a certain amount of time. I forgot how much time, but if you don't save your images, then they don't get saved onto the captures gallery. At least that's what I think. So anyways. But yeah, I can basically just do it again. Take this uh, camera, I can go up to somebody and then just take a screenshot out of random uh, and then give me another Polaroid pic just to show right here that it took a screenshot of whatever was on the screen. So again, this is a really cool feature um, added into Roblox. Okay, so on the right side, I'm gonna open up my starter player and there's this camera tool that's right here that has a handle and a local script. So if we open this up, we can see that we are using a service called Capture Service, which is the new service that we're gonna be using uh, for all these API methods. Um, and then another thing we have is in replicated storage, we have a Polaroid PIC um, tool. So if I show this inside of the workspace, this is basically what the Polaroid PIC looks like. This is what we're going to use to take the screenshot and basically plaster it onto here once we actually do take a screenshot. So that's gonna be inside of replicated storage. Let's go back to our script. And essentially what we have down here is we have a functionality that basically allows us to equip the tool. Um, and then we're able to basically take a picture um, once we're in this capture mode. Now this capture mode is completely optional. This is basically something that I did just in the background. Um, but what really matters here is this function right here that says take picture. We use capture service to capture a screenshot. This is a method here that we're used to capture a screenshot. And we basically throw in this function that acts as a callback. So where is this on capture ready function? Well, it should be up here, basically this big, big old thing right here on capture ready. So if we take a screenshot, then we're going to pass in the function on capture ready. And this is going to give us uh, the asset ID, as you saw down here with RBX temp 27 or 28 or whatever number it was, it's going to give us the content ID. So this is what was being printed right here, the new content ID. Um, and then what I basically did was I cloned this Polaroid pic and then I changed the image label to the content ID, and then I put it in the player's backpack. Uh, and then also like this start effect script that basically started black, but then it slowly faded into visibility and you know, just things like that. Um, and that is essentially this script that I had right here for the Polaroid pick. But you might've noticed that there's a bunch of other things here that might be useful to know about for this capture API service. So. So I'm going to show you more things that relate to this capture API that you might find useful. Okay, before I show you more, there's one thing I do want to quickly note about. So I published my game and I'm in a current client on Roblox. You can see that there's no captures menu in here, but instead we have the default record setting. Um, to my knowledge, this feature doesn't work if you're on PC. This only works if you're on mobile. Like I tried this out on my mobile phone and I was able to see the captures um, menu that was inside of my in-game settings. But this, to my knowledge, does not work with PC as of right now. I don't even know if this works with console. That's just gonna be something you're gonna have to experiment with yourself. But yeah, I wanted to quickly point that out just in case you were confused about that. Okay, let me show you what this script does. So I'm going to scroll all the way down here. We're going to see that we're gonna be using user input service to get the input of the player. If they press the P key, then we're going to capture a screenshot uh, using this on capture ready callback. So if we scroll back up here again, this is the on capture ready callback function that's going to pass in our content ID. Um, you might notice that we have an image label here that's going to be set equal to the content ID to change the image. Uh, it's basically this thing right up here so that we can see it in real time. Okay, so going back to the script, 
Uh, we have this table here called saved IDs. And this is basically going to be the table that's going to contain all of the content IDs of the pictures that we take in the game. So this will allow us to save multiple pictures if we choose to do so. So down here, we're going to use table.insert to, to take the content ID and put it inside of the saved IDs table. And then we're going to prompt save captures to gallery, which basically asks the player, do you want to save these pictures to your gallery? Of course, that's pretty self-explanatory. So we're going to pass in the table of all the content IDs, and then there's going to be this result callback function. So let's kind of take a look at what, what this is. So this was taken from the Roblox uh, developer forum posts. Like you can see it as one of the examples, um, but essentially what is happening here is that this result callback is needed uh, to know if the player actually does decide to uh, either save the image or not save the image because there can be multiple images displayed on screen if the player chooses to save one of the three images or all of the images or if the player just decides not to save any of the images then uh, we can know this using this result callback and I'll show you what this looks like in the game right now so that is essentially what makes up this script right here so I'm gonna go into the game and show you what this looks like now, once again, I want to preface this. This will not work in an actual Roblox game. This is solely just for testing purposes. Um, but basically, when I press P, then what's going to happen is it's first going to prompt me if I want to save this capture uh, to my gallery. But it's also going to display up here my new, uh, my new screenshot that I just took. So I'm not going to save this. I'm gonna say no thanks. And then let's press P again. So now what's going to happen is it's going to display all of my captures that are in the saved IDs table. So I can choose which ones I want to save to my gallery uh, or which ones I don't want to save. So let's save the first one up here. So let's hit save. Uh, and then we're able to share this with our friends as well. But because we're in Roblox Studio, we're not actually able to share it. Um, but if we go to captures, we can see that this image is now a part of my gallery that I saved to. So I can either download it, I can share it, or I can even delete it. So I could just delete it if I really want to. Um, and then go back into here. Let's press P again. And then what should be displayed is three images instead of two. And I can save all of these images as well. So... Uh, I can basically go to my captures, and as you can see, all three images have been saved onto my gallery, because uh, that's what I decided to do when uh, I prompted myself to save these into my gallery. So that is a pretty neat feature when it comes to saving screenshots to your galleries, but this is one way of doing it, and there's definitely a lot of ways I can think of incorporating this um, capture save to gallery thing. So I hope you found this part to be pretty informative. Okay, and finally, sharing screenshots is another thing that is useful with this API. So if I click capture, then it's going to prompt that, would I like to share my capture that I just created? So if I clicked on share, if I was on a mobile device, then it would prompt the user to take the screenshot and then just like uh, send it to whoever they want to share it to uh, so that they can uh, look at it or they can try and join into the game with them uh, with this feature. So let's go into the script that displays this. Okay, so down here, uh, I'm using an event this time rather than using this user input service. So this is an event that basically uh, detects if a user decides to take a picture. And if they do, and it's going to fire whatever's inside of this function here uh, with the past with the past in capture ID. So you might notice that it's kind of strange. We have this table here called capture launch data, and we have a variable that's also called launch data, and this prompt share capture method seems kind of weird. So let me try and break this down for you uh, based on my understanding of this. So obviously the first argument here for prompt share capture is the content ID of the image. The second one is the launch data, which I'm going to go into in a little bit. The third one is the on accepted callback, and the fourth one is the on declined callback. So if we scroll up, we can see that there's two functions here. So this handles if the user decides to accept the share prompt, and then this one is if the user doesn't decide to accept the share prompt. So we can basically do certain things with this depending on whether the player does decide to share or whether they don't decide to share. So, so now if we go back down here and look at this capture launch data, what does this actually entail? So remember how I said that 
Uh, when you decide to share screenshots with people, you can decide if you want to allow the user to send a link with that screenshot uh, that they send. So this tells us, is this a screenshot invite? Meaning, does this screenshot have an invite embedded onto it? And then the second piece of information is the inviter's user ID, which is just the player's user ID, the person who took the screenshot. And then we take this capture launch data and then we convert it into a JSON so that this is nice and nicely organized for us to just put here as our second argument for our launch data. Now, I haven't gotten too deep into join data or developer deep linking and all that sort of stuff because that ties into what we're doing here. But essentially, this is what, based on my understanding, is how sharing captures work in Roblox Studio. Okay, so that was a little rundown of how Roblox's new capture service is used inside of our games. I think there's definitely a lot of possibilities when it comes to using capture service uh, with this new API that Roblox has given to us to now use in our games. I hope this gave you motivation to use capture APIs in your Roblox game, because I think this would definitely be a very cool feature to have in your Roblox game. Now, if you want to know more information about how capture service works, I will have a link to that in the description of this video if you want to check that out for yourself. But with that being said, that's basically gonna be it for this video. Uh, if you want to check out my advanced scripting tutorial series, if you're still relatively new to all this stuff, then I'm going to have a link for that to you right here on this video. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video. Take care.